What's up, YouTube? Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for all the love you guys have been showing. I, I hope you're enjoying the content, and I hope it's improving your tennis game. Today, we're going to go over backhand technique, and specifically, the difference between a one-handed backhand and a two-handed backhand. We're going to go over the differences technically, and then we'll go over the positives and negatives of each. Maybe you're on the fence on which one you should be using, and maybe we can help guide you along and, and uh, make that decision. So there's a few technical differences between a one-handed and a two-handed backhand, namely kind of the location of the contact point. Because your back shoulder and the arm attached to it is attached to the racket, for the two-handed backhand, your contact point is a little further back, not as far in front, and a little more out to the side. Whereas when you have the freedom of just using your front shoulder, your contact point's gonna be a little further in front, out here, and then a little less out to the side there. Now what this does is, it all, is that also changes the ideal grip that would keep the wrist in a comfortable position. Here you'll see I'm on an eastern backhand grip that keeps my, my wrist in a good position. And then if I go back a little bit, it kind of naturally changes that grip to be more of a continental grip. So the grip's going to be slightly different. And then also the position of the body. You'll notice for a one-hander, my body is going to be a little more sideways at the hip. Again, this rear shoulder isn't attached. And what that does is it allows you to throw the left side back. It works as a reactive break. It helps you hit a little harder. It's going to throw that arm out. That's why you see on a lot of high-level players, their one-handers, they're going to throw their opposite arm back. Whereas on the two-handers, just because that left arm comes around, your body's going to be a little bit more square, kind of at a 45 degree angle at contact, although the body still, still stops. So before we move on to the positives and negatives of each, I definitely feel I should tell you about some theories I've heard about. As far as I know, there's still theories that uh, certain people have natural propensities towards being fine motor skilled or gross motor skilled, and that possibly that depending on your motor skill, you might be naturally pulled toward, one -hand or, uh, toward a one-handed backhand or a two-handed backhand. So for example, a gross motor skilled individual might feel comfortable having both hands on the racket, feeling like they can get their body more involved into it, whereas a fine motor skilled individual might like that freeing feeling of having the wrist and forearm be dominating the stroke more. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can do some more research on that on your own. So just know that whether the re regardless of what we find by the end of this video, um, you still might have a personal preference towards one or the other. So one main advantage of having a one-handed backhand is basically variety, adaptability, and even disguise. So basically, since my left hand's already up on the throat of the racket with a s slight grip change, it's gonna be a lot easier for me to transition from a one-handed topspin backhand to a slice backhand if I need to. And as we move into the mid-court area, again, if it's a high ball, I can certainly try to hit an angle winner. I could play an underspin approach and move through it, or I can very easily disguise a drop shot. And then, of course, obviously, finally transitioning to the net for a one-handed backhand volley. The other main positive of a one-handed backhand is you can hit it harder. That's right. You get more power from the downswing on a one-hander, whereas a two-hander the left hand acts somewhat as a drag. You also get a nice, loose, longer lever. And again, that left side being thrown back also helps you accelerate the racket more. However, there's one big asterisk next to that concept of being able to hit a one-handed backhand harder than a two-handed backhand. And that's you can only hit it harder if you happen to be in the ideal contact point. The main benefit for a two-handed backhand, and it's a big one in my opinion, is that if you do happen to be a little late, have to take the ball behind you a little more, or maybe the ball gets a little high on you, you have that opposite hand to still muscle that ball around and be able to get some pace. With the one-hander, if you get late or high, you're just not going to be able to produce a heavy ball. So one-handers typically have to work really, really hard to get in position and make sure they get every ball in a kind of a less adaptable contact point. So maybe you're an all-court player and you're fine motor skilled and you can work really hard to get in position for the ball, maybe you should have a one-hander. 
Maybe you're gross motor skilled and you like having two hands on the racket and you also like the idea of being able to get out of sticky situations with that extra hand to muscle it around. Maybe you're a two-hander. I honestly think we'll continue to see both one-handers and two-handers successful on the tour. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.